nicely too and your boat was going very fast at the time yes we've just rebuilt the motor uh, last week we finished it and I've probably, the boat's probably going about the best it's ever gone and we're really looking forward to a big weekend and here's our race leader blondie turning into the straight she'll get the checkered flag this time around she's certainly looking good on the water today is blondie well ahead of settle down and highway motel in third position but it's another win to the tamworth boat blondie already two handicap events she's won and now this one the scratch event to blondie and greg clark that easy win was to mean both success and disaster to greg clark as I was finishing the end of the race, I noticed a little bit of water around my feet. And I thought, this is not, uh, not right. The boat should not have water inside. And we went to, got it straight into the bank and pulled it out. And we found a bit of a hole in the bottom. So, unfortunately, it's put us... In the first heat of the Straight Mile Classic, over on the far side of the course is Hardy getting away well. In the centre of the field is the only drag boat in the event, Outrage. It's also off to a good start. In fact, Len Goldsmith in Outrage puts on the power and it shoots away from Hardy. Mirage Rowanale will get third, but as expected, Outrage easily wins heat one. You're very successful in this type of event, Lem, with your boat outrage. Oh, yeah, we've had a fair run, you know. It's one of those things you never really win un until you cross the line. And uh, it's like everything else. We prepare pretty well for this race each year, and we feel it's one of the main attractions up here, and we like to give it our best shot. You're in the final for the Straight Mile Classic. Who do you think would be the hardest to beat? The piece uh, must have a very good show. He's a very good competitor, and... Um, well, any of the boys would line up down there must think they have a show, so I'd say that, that we're all in there and we're all trying our best. We're halfway through the three-day Manning River Aquatic Festival. And up to this point, two of the major boat designer builders to prove competitive are Bob Thurger and Bert Everingham. Everingham hulls are represented by a number of boats, the most successful of which is General E. Here, General E, with Malcolm Everingham, the son of the boat builder, at the controls, again proves too good for the opposition. Bert, what do you think makes General E go so quickly? Well, Rod, it's a combination of everything. The boat, the engine, the money, and you get the whole act together, and, of course, the driver has a big lot to do with it. The Everingham boat itself, the design, you see quite a lot of Everingham hulls around. How much do they differ, each individual boat? Well, they're different uh, because of the power plant that you put in the boat. Uh, this is a 17-footer. It's uh, the most popular of our design. Malcolm Everingham is the driver of the boat, General E. How fast is it going? Probably about 110, 112 in the straights, and then we just sort of cruise around if you can ease up. It's Horny looks a very powerful type of boat. Have you driven this type of boat for long? No, yesterday was my first race that I had with this motor in this boat. Um, the other boat I was driving was quite some less powerful than what this one is. How do they differ, the size of boats? Uh, it's not actually the boat size, it's the motor size. Um, this one's easy to handle, it goes across the water better and doesn't sort of dig in as much with, the, like, with more power, it sort of just glides across. How did you feel yesterday, your first time in such a powerful boat? Very scared, <laughs> extremely nervous. I thought I was going to be sick, actually. Another Bob Thurgar hull that's doing extremely well this weekend is the Nobby Nuts entry, and it's owned and driven by Ralph Philpot. Ralph, you should be very, very happy the way the boat's going. Excellent. Very pleased. Perhaps you could describe the boat to us. It's certainly a very good-looking craft. Oh, it's just a 17-foot uh, Thurgar T-deck, um, fiberglass hull. Uh, it's got the, uh, the cutout in the, uh, the deck for, the, uh, the, for the, uh, the driver to sit way back further and the extended steering column in case you come out or anything like that, you know. What's the, uh, the reason for wanting to sit back further? Oh, in case it rolls over, you can get thrown out of your boat much easier instead of getting locked underneath the deck. You, know? you seem to be winning your races quite easily too, I notice. Well, once you get out in front, whoever does get out in front, it's very hard course one, you know, to, 
just to get around the per per person. If you're running second, it's, you know, it's nearly impossible to get around another equal boat. If, once you get the boy first, hey, that's it. You've got the race. Much to the delight of all the competitors and organisers, the weekend was free of major accidents. However, there were a couple of incidents that certainly brought the large crowd to its feet, one of which involved Graham Hart's inboard heartache. Watch the boat on the left of your screen as he tries to beat the piece to the first turn. There was a bit of a problem. It appears as though we hit a big wave and the boat got on its side and... Well, luckily we drive a pretty good boat and it came back down the right way for us. I'm afraid I was a bit out of control. We just tried to keep the boat on the inner straight line and uh, as I say, we drive a good boat and it came down on the right way. Another close call occurred when Philip Wright, driver of the Armadale boat Cobra, also pushed a little too hard to try to keep up with the piece at another event. Philip recalls his traumatic experience. Yeah, we got a little bit unstuck. We come out wide. We got forced wide by uh, Chevy, and once I just powered on out of the corner, it just uh, not enough down pedal, and it sort of did a bit of a 360. But no worries. <laughs> what do you? What actually goes through your mind when that sort of thing is happening, and you actually, you know, about to come out of the boat? Well, it's just happened so quick, you know, you haven't got, you haven't really got time to think about anything except, you know, you just land in the water and nothing you can do about it. But, um, that's one of those things. The flag is down, the race is on, and this is the second heat. Outrage winner of the first heat very easily. Who's going to take out the second heat? As was expected, the piece, the big black boat on the outside of the course, is going extremely fast. You can hear the engines whistling as the piece takes out the second heat very easily. It comes down towards the finish line. The checkered flag is out. And the piece, an easy winner, going across the line in second place. General E, followed by Cobra. Then comes Chevy on the inside. Bob Berger is billed a driver of the piece. What's it feel like behind the wheel, Bob? Oh, it's a buzz. And, uh, no, I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. So it's, it's what I get out of it for myself. And, um, as far as what I get, I, I'd like to get a lot of um, recognition for the owner because he puts in the dollars. Um, he spends all the money all the time, so uh, I'm pretty happy sort of turning up and driving it. What speed do you get up to in, in the piece? Well, we've done 120 mile an hour. And, since we've we've done 120 we've gone bigger in the engine and we're just playing with a new deal now so we're hoping it'll it'll keep performing and go a bit, bit quicker what type of surface and conditions do you need for it to perform well oh any sort any sort of surface we're not real fussy well, how do the boats compare outrage and and yours oh well, outrage that's a an all-out drag boat that's all it can do um under any other conditions it's useless so if he can't win this meeting, well, he can't win at all. The flag must drop on the pole boat before the boats get underway. They must stay behind the pole boat until the flag drops. They all do. They're underway. And in the centre of the court, the piece gets away well. So too does Chevy as they head down towards the first turn. There's a spin out. Well, the inside's gone. It's uh, wrapped. Everything's OK, but it's actually done a 360. The piece has pulled up as well. The piece has been swapped on the first turn. Now, Raptor has got going again, but the piece hasn't. And we won't be seeing much of the piece during this event, which is very unfortunate. Let's see if we can sort ourselves out and see what boat has got to the lead. It's Chevy. Chevy has avoided the trouble. Chevy goes around to the bottom end of the course, ahead of Cobra from Armadale. It's going well in second place. Now, in third at the moment, we've got uh, joint effort. Dedication to from Tempsey is there as well. So too is Truer. Raptor's got going again, but it's uh, certainly not going to take much of a part in the finish of the event. As they head down the straight, and it's uh, the leader, Chevy, in front. In second place is Cobra. Third is joint effort and dedication to is in fourth place at the present time. This is a very important event on the card. It's the Jeff Stevenson Perpetual Memorial Trophy. Jeff Stevenson was 
uh, killed a couple of years back on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland, driving the Lord's Prayer. He's remembered with this event, and at the present time, we've got Chevy doing big things down the back of the course. Chevy's in front of Cobra. In third place, well, there's a couple together, actually. It's joint effort and dedication, too. Around the bottom end of the course, and Chevy in front. Cobra seems to have had some sort of engine trouble now. Goodness me, Philip Wright's had a lot of trouble with Cobra. He fell out of the boat earlier today, and now he's got engine trouble. He's got going again, but lost a lot of ground. In the meantime, Chevy has shot ahead down the straight. Cobra's being passed now by joint effort and dedication, too. And Cobra looks like it may not participate in the final lap of this event, which is bad news for Philip Wright. In the meantime, around the top end of the course, they've got the yellow flag. One lap to go, and this is Chevy, the race leader, going big guns at the present time in second place now we have dedication to and joint effort and then comes general e and wrapped and cobra's got going again but certainly won't uh, be in the leading contenders now they head down the back of the course for the final time around the bottom end of the boys it's chevy in front in second place we have uh, joint effort being passed by dedication to that's the country boat going into second place now dedication to leaving a gap between Dedication 2 and Joint Effort in third place. But here's the leader, Chevy. There's something bouncing around the back of the boat. Looks like a fuel connection. Certainly hasn't slowed it down any, and Chevy's going to be a big winner in this event. Smoothly in the pits is the job of pit controller Ted Hill. Ted, in your 15 years with the Aquatic Festival, you've probably seen a few changes. Uh, particularly the straight course classic has been changed this year. Uh, in the past, we've started with uh, basically a straight mile, which uh, had a bend uh, in the course, which is not good for we say uh, high speed uh, drag type racing. This year we decided that we'd run it over um, two heats in a final. From uh, my point of view, the uh, turn up of boats here this year has been absolutely magnificent. Uh, the six litre class particularly, now, I've never seen racing as good as the six litres are running here this year. It's been absolutely fantastic. This is the one we've all been waiting for, the final of the straight course classic. Hanging back is Yana 5 and also Cobra. They'll miss the start. The flag is up, it drops in, they're away. And on the far side of the course, getting away first was the outboard Mirage. In the centre, Chevy gets away well, so too, as expected. The big black, the piece is first away. Outrage has missed the start slightly, and the piece shoots to the front. On the far side of the course, Mirage going well in second place. Third at the present time is Chevy. Outrage is starting to make up ground when it's all over. Then comes a spot on and general lead. But there's the winner. The piece comes down to get the checkered flag. An easy winner of the final of the straight course classic. On the far side, second is Mirage. Third is Chevy. And flying home in fourth place is Outrage. The piece was undoubtedly the most successful boat over the carnival, winning numerous trophies for its connections. And on the subject of peace, as the races concluded, the noise subsided, and the sun set. It was time to adjourn to the carnival area to enjoy a feast of fun, thrills, and... Just raising hay, it's, it's something out of this world. It's really great. As it has been in past years? Yes, Bill, it will be a bigger and better program. Uh, a total of 54 events will be held over the two and a half days. Um, prize money will be uh, $14,000, including the trophy. There are already entries received, and the total number should be in the vicinity of 100 to 120. Bill, I remember in past years, names like the Lord's Prayer and Cobra providing the thrills and spills. Who do you think is going to provide all the action this year? Well, number one on the list, I think, will, would have to be Bob Berger with his new piece. Uh, the old piece, most viewers will uh, know that uh, it's integrated down in, in Sydney some eight or nine months ago. They've rebuilt a new one, and the um, boat is going very well. There, there was also Don Sainty has a new, uh, Stan Sandy, sorry, has a new boat, uh, the Fallacy. It's yet unknown, but he will be here, and he should give us a lot of uh, entertainment in the straight course classic. So the straight course classic, of course, is the drag race, again in two heats and a final. Uh, who do you think is going to take that out? 
Well, that could be one of... Uh, could, probably it could be battled out between the police, uh, Stan Sadie, and maybe one of, of the outboys, Mirage or Blondie or one of those folks could be well in amongst it, maybe even settle down. Well, now, what time does racing start on each of the three days? On, on Saturday, we commence racing at 12 o'clock with 15 events. Sunday is 10.30 with 19 events. And Monday, uh, 24 events. And with a big program of speedboat racing and all the fun of the fair at Sideshow Alley, the scene is set for a brilliant weekend, a fun-filled weekend here on the Mighty Manning. That's our report for today on the 35th Manning River Aquatic Festival. Another report, same time tomorrow. Manning River Aquatic Festival, a carnival which, of course, centers on the speedboat action on the mighty Manning River. The speedboat program was one of the smoothest ever staged, with only one mishap to mar proceedings. And that occurred when a boat called PJs spun out on a turn in one of the morning races. The driver was subsequently taken to hospital, suffering a lacerated leg. The driver out of the action, the boat was back on the water in the afternoon. We're off. They're off. The action generally was fast and furious, and in this report we highlight the two heats of the ECN8 straight course classic. Heat one was won by Fallacy from Mirage and Vengeance. And the second heat of the ECN 8 straight course classic was won by Glendale Chemicals from Crazy and Boral Autogas. The final of the event will be staged Monday mid-morning and will be one of the events covered live on Mine 8 television. Let's You're follow right. the heat to the finish line. Beach was the venue for the annual Capricorn 2000 Pro-Am Surf Classic, an event which has become one of the most hotly contested on the Australian... The driver suffered severe leg injuries. Chopping conditions on the Manning halted racing three hours ahead of schedule. Racing was halted at 3 p.m. this afternoon when the driver of the outboard racer, Team Mariner, was thrown from his craft during a scratch race event. The driver, Ray Deeg of Windsor, was thrown from his boat as it reared in the choppy conditions whipped up by the gusty nor'easter. Deeg was struck by another craft in the incident and suffered severe lacerations to his legs from the boat's propeller. Dragged from the water by rescue craft, he was transported to the riverbank where he was administered first aid by ambulancemen before being admitted to the Manning River District Hospital. The incident halted racing until a meeting could be arranged between aquatic organisers and competitors. At 3.45, it was decided that no further events would go ahead and the remaining six races were cancelled. For organisers, it was a disappointing finish to what was otherwise the most successful aquatic festival ever staged. The highlight of today's event was the straight course classic over 1.5 kilometres, won again this year by Fallacy. It was the first time in the history of the aquatic festival that racing has been broadcast live. And the telecast from the 9-8 outside broadcast unit is believed to be a first for speedboat racing in Australia. The weather that had threatened to mar the festival earlier on Saturday